Then you need to fill in the collagen pad. Then, then the powder has been put in a Faraday cup. That cup has been kept in the exposure to electron beam. So electron beam you can get from the magnetron. Or there are plenty of sources with that you can get the electron beam. That is a focused electron beam. The variation of the size of the electron beam you need to choose with uh, your needs. So the size of the electron beam, the power of the electron beam, the energy of the electron beam that you need to choose with your base how you want to get the nanoparticle. So basically, in this electron irradiation process, what you are powdering or getting the image after uh, that powder, you need to put in the Faraday cup. That Faraday cup has been put in the expo uh, exposure to electron beam of specific energy, and that electron energy is allowed to pass through whole cell which has been kept inside the collagen band. Because of the electron beam, the size of the powdered material which is there in the collagen band, the size will get reduced. So after that. Uh, and then second you need to keep really for uh, 10 minutes and after that when the sample is coming out the sample for that sample we need to the UV XRD and all that so please go on to the next slide so here yeah, I have collected some data with the previous analysis papers and uh, the data I have compiled and we got that when the uh, the sample is uh, exposed to 6 MeV electron beam. So 6 MeV means I'm talking to the energy. Then with that XRD, UV, and the screen data I'll show over here. Uh, when you observe this data manually, you will be able to see the peaks and with that uh, we need to calculate the size and the band gap energy for the crystal. So, so please go on to the next slide. This data is for 8 MeV. Go on to the next slide and then we can So when you see this compiled data, for 4 MeV, 6 MeV, 8 MeV, and different irradiation processes are I'm talking about. Then here you see electron fluence. The electron fluence means what? It's the uh, amount of energy falling on a uh, cross section. So electron divided by centimeter square, the electron energy is falling onto the particular area. Then the area has been exposed to electron beam. So here I have given different sizes of the electron fluence. 0, 0.0 means the first data is done when no irradiation is there. So, peak position when they are doing XRD for that peak position, the electron is put in here that is equal to 75, and the band gap energy, which is there before it is 3.29, and the crystal size is 46. Then, second simple, where we expose that uh, simple and electron fluence that is 1 and 10 to 15. Uh, peak position changes to 376 and the band gap energy just got increased and the crystal uh, size is the same. So basically, 4 MeV did not got a remarkable change in the size of the crystal, did not got any remarkable change in the band gap energy. So basically, below 4 MeV, if you are irradiating the sample, no remarkable difference will be observed. So this next slide. Now, when we move on to the 6 MeV, 6 MeV irradiation uh, over the same sample. Then, uh, for different uh, electron fluence, we observe that the band gap energy is keep on increasing when we are increasing the like uh, electron uh, fluence and the crystal size is keep on increasing. So initially, when I started with the talk, I said that the band gap energy is having a relation with the cross sectional area of the material. So when crystal size is decreasing, for that definitely there will be a change in the band gap energy. How I calculated that uh, reference is also at given and how we can calculate the band gap energy with the crystalline solids. So please go on to the next slide. This results are there for ADMEV. So here also uh, for uh, 1 into 10 to 15 and it's 12.5 into 10 to 15. So when you observe the band gap energy and crystalline size, it is keep on increasing uh, with the uh, now, when I compare these three tables, if I'm taking only one, uh, uh, what I can say, the data, that is for the electron influence 5.0 to 10 to 15. And when I compare these three tables, you will be observing that for 6 MeV and 8 MeV. So, when basically I'm increasing the energy of the electron, the change in the crystalline size as well as the band gap energy is more. So, whenever you need the more band gap energy, you need to less the crystalline size and 
for that, we need to use the blue light for the target. Next slide, please. So these are the references with that I calculated. This is the uh, uh, papers with that how to do these are the very general things how to calculate the value of the this like size this uh, this paper and this is brought back old papers so here we have given the reference but then I have calculated the um, value of energy with the crystalline solids and from where I have collected the data that uh, reference is like so please next slide now as a conclusion I can say that so then we have a particular show only changes in crystalline size and value of energy no changes are there for four energy so probably below that it will remain same so if I want the changes in terms of value of energy uh, uh, for the irradiation, we need to use the energy, uh, beam energy greater than 4 mm. Second conclusion I make out with my overall review was X6 and even 90 mm. Collected data shows a change in this, that, this the size of value of energy. So basically for changing the uh, value of energy, we need to give at least this much amount of energy. Uh, so, as per desired and required size of children, it's good for different applications that are very So, here I have taken the example of the semiconductor industry, but we know that children can be used for different applications. Like, you know, I have gone through with that paper, so that paper, children are going to be used for acting as a sensor for photographs or photographs. So, they are different meaning the specific size of the environment. Oh. So the paper came in uh -huh. 2026. Uh -huh. So the paper I gone through. Uh -huh. So there are also specific sizes. So, the the so with this process, we can get a five size of the nanoparticle of Zendino. And with that, uh, we can use it as a sensor, we can use it as a semiconductor device and all that. Apart from that, uh, like what does it know? Uh, apart from that, if I use the Zendino for uh, the application of uh, in film coating or any single application, again, there also we will be needing the specific size of it. So, with the irradiation process, we can achieve that thing. Uh, I've gone through with a few papers there. The energy beam energy is used more than 10 and maybe 25 and maybe the papers also I've gone through it. But for semiconducting industry, this much energy, whatever I found was uh, more applicable. So, that's why I've not given the rest of the data in this paper. So this is an emerging research field, but more application of this ER irradiation is when uh, polycrystal insulators, if I'm talking about, for the wire, there is a coating of the insulating material. And generally, we are observing that uh, because of the high peak in the current, suddenly there is a shock, and because of that, there is a melting of the insulating material over the wire. And because of that, uh, fire is there in the houses and everything. So with this irradiation process, that can also be reduced. So I'm not talking for that, but I think uh, talking for some other material. So that can also be reduced. So for that, all the things can be done. Uh, that uh, insulator has been uh, exposed to the EB, uh, electron beam radiations. Because of that, some properties are changing in the material. And the, we can make the wire shock proof for the fire resistance. So that things are also going on for this higher education. Thank you. So this is any questions. Any questions? So here basically I've taken the applications in the field of physics and then I have created this. Yes, sir. Should be better. Yeah, and should be small. Yeah, and should be small. Yes, that I know. But here I compiled that because for some specific application, I had gone through the work on. Uh, that's why I compiled for semi-metal. Now I need to work on like when doping is in the ZNO. Uh, Actually, this compilation I had done for pure ZNO. Uh -huh. Now I need to work on that. That's why I compiled this. Actually, uh, my talk was not as a keynote speaker. It was for a specific paper. So that's why I made it very specific. So hope you people like the... Thank you. Thank you.
Yes. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. The host needed to unmute me. I was uh, all good on my side. So let me share my screen. So it's five minutes for presentation, right? Yes. Yeah. Let me let me share my screen. Sir, please share. Yeah. I guess my screen is visible now. Is the puberty yes, sir. yeah puberty visible? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let me share this one. Okay. So thank you so much for giving me this wonderful opportunity. Myself, uh, Dr. Sushant Singh, Associate Professor, MIT Institute of uh, Biotechnology, and uh, uh, I am uh, basically a nanotechnologist by research. The topic uh, which I'm going to present uh, today in this cycle. Uh, is a trash to tracer with a green antioxidative serum oxide nanomaterial cellulose mat for biomedical application. And before I start my presentation, thanks to uh, the Psycon team and the management for giving me this opportunity to present in front of a mask who is very much enthusiastic. So I guess I'm unable to move my slide. I have to stop and share it again. Yeah. So uh, coming to nanotechnology, nanotechnology has uh, two important aspects which really makes this nanotechnology an exciting field. The first one is that nanoparticles similar to in the size range of many common biomolecules can be synthesized. Let's think that you are synthesizing a nanomaterial, which is exactly the size of your red blood cell or a protein molecule in your body. You see how much application that nanomaterial can have. And, and the second is that you can tailor and control the nanomaterial properties at a very nanoscale range. Let's suppose there is a cancer patient, there is a diabetic patient, and they need a particular very specific type of nanomaterial, which should only impact the cancer cell. So that kind of nanomaterial you can synthesize. So these are the two important aspects of nanotechnology, which makes it a highly important field. Coming to the different issues, uh, why nanotechnology is important is that there is another issue that is of biomedical waste. A huge amount of biomedical waste we have been generating, and I think we, uh, post COVID, we all know this. Uh, what is the rate of biomedical waste which is being generated? So, if we keep on producing the amount of biomedical waste, definitely we are ending around 500 million tons per year, not only in India, but all around the world. So, I guess there, there has been certain issues going on where, you know, the earth is getting more and more kind of a waste material. So, we need technology where we can convert this waste into wealth, trash into treasure. And this is what we have been doing. Uh, coming to Chhattisgarh, Chhattisgarh is the state of rice capital. And what we have is around 3000 rice mill. What we generate from this rice mill is waste and only waste that is uh, rice husk. And we are looking forward to certain technologies where we can convert this rice husk material into a cellulosic mat material. This is what we have been doing using the nanotechnology. Using nanotechnology based solutions and green synthesis process, we are trying to convert this into an eco-friendly, eco uh, cost-effective, safe and sustainable uh, material which can be used in biomedical application. The other area uh, and in similar direction, we are using andrographis panuculata plant, uh, traditional plant of Chhattisgarh state for its uh, uh, different properties on health benefits where it is used in 
anti diabetic anti cancer properties anti inflammatory anti microbial and immunomodulatory properties so what we are conducting and concluding right now is that we are using waste material of rice husk we are using green material of uh, this andrographis panoculata plant and we are using a nanotechnology based serum oxide multifunctional nanomaterial for its antioxidative properties we all know that ross reactive oxygen species is the down root cause of most of the disease including dna damage mutation cancers protein damage hydroxyl radicals and cardiovascular diseases so our aim is to combine all these three things together in form of a biological mat which can be used for wound healing application and the different application which uh, serum oxide nanomaterial has is antioxidative activity anti cancerous activity wound healing properties and controls and we have been uh, generating lots and lots of data in this uh, particular direction so this is our work design layout where we are using rice husk material with cellulosic blend and we are using drug and bioactive component using electrospinning technique to create a biodegradable and sustainable mat for our application these are the three different polymeric materials which we have been using for our synthesis and this is the exact protocol which we have optimized and we are generating close to 60% of cellulosic mat uh, cellulosic material from this rice husk material uh, rice husk waste and this is the uh, layout where we are using electro spinning technique to get this biodegradable solution green root based cnps and therapeutic molecules into a wound healing mat in this direction we have recently launched uh, our startup that is the first faculty based startup from uh, in the name of nanti bio solutions and the focus theme area is sustainable biotechnology nano biomaterials and next generation polymers and this is the call of time and the call of government that more and more researchers especially young researchers in the Direction of sustainable biotechnology. Uh, basically, cellulose based mass with antimicrobial properties anti-inflammatory properties what you can think of that you are using a face mask material which is not going anywhere and it, it will be there another 10 years uh, post covid also and uh, uh, you know you have to have a sustainable material how waste goes up into the environment so this is the kind of a material which we have to develop uh, uh, initially uh, the kind of yeah that uh, just a last slide so the kind of research we do in aib refers to all the different fields and nanotechnology is one which we do i invite you to amity institute of biotechnology Chhattisgarh. please welcome your most visit and see our research facilities thank you sai college for being a great host it's a nice uh, i would have loved to attend this personally but uh, due to certain time limitations and certain other engagement i'm online over here and thank you so, so much i will just end with one quote that uh, there's nothing, uh, I believe, more strongly in getting young people interested. And this is what these kind of conferences have been doing. Young people interested in science and engineering for a better tomorrow for all humankind. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. Any One, one uh, why we have to use cerium uh, the point uh, first of all with this is especially is a very unique of the slide oxidative material in one way it it is a biological enzyme which is present in our system and in another way it goes into a catalase mimetic enzyme which itself again is a biological enzyme present in our system and what we have observed is that this serum oxide material is completely non-toxic uh, into human cells a lot of research has already been done by our my previous group where we have tested in on animal models that the serum oxide and we have found it has to be completely non-toxic Whereas other nanomaterial, if you take, they go beyond a certain level of concentration, they turns out to be toxic. So this is why cerium have been used as a nanomaterial. And uh, coming to and why what cerium... Is, what, is the size? what is the size of this? The size of cerium oxide nanomaterial mm -hmm. turns out to be around like uh, 2 to 10 nanometer. Hello? 
सर योर वॉइस इज ब्रेकिंग इफेक्ट इन द uh into this uh, kind of uh, metal rods otherwise what happen when we uh, engulf those materials in our body to ek thoda sa body reject karta hai aur and uh, oxidative defense induce karta hai to wahan pe when we used to coat with this anti oxidative material the uh, the body accepts it in a very well manner okay yeah thank you thank you thank you so much uh, for this time thank you so much guys thank you sir Dear participant, let us break for the lunch. Let us all assemble a sharp by the forty. आप लोग please uh, join रहेंगे. आप लोग इसमें छोड़ने की जरूरत है. बनी भी रहेंगे आप.